And we um, come to the next speaker, who is uh, Lars Eggert. Um, Lars is the technical director for networking in NetApp office uh, of the CTO based near Helsinki. Um, he was a former chair of the Internet Research Task Force. Um, he is well known for his contributions to transfer protocols. And um, he currently shares a quick working group. And this is also a talk about. So Lars, the floor is yours. Yeah, it's the audio, okay. Yes. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, let me see if I can share this thing. Um, right, can you see the slides? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'll, I'll, I think I have half an hour uh, and I have a lot of slides, so I'll, I'll talk pretty brief uh, for each slide and you guys can uh, ask me questions if I was too fast. So some of you might have seen this before. I've talked about this at, at the IETF and also at uh, um, the security conference late last year, early this spring. Um, so basically, I've I've been doing some work with Quick, and I've sort of wondered whether sort of you know there's there's a lot of sort of bespoke protocols that are being developed for the for the IoT as everybody knows, but I was wondering if it's actually possible to run something like Quick, which is you know the the new Internet standard um, as a transfer protocol with the intent to support HTTP three, but potentially other stuff. So if it's possible to run Quick on some embedded devices, and this wasn't a very scientific effort, so basically asked Matthias and some other people like what what boards are you know pretty featureful um I didn't want to like go through all of this trouble and then realize that I, I started with a platform that was too small so I, I got some pretty beefy platforms just to try it and to see if I could get it to run um and this is sort of a talk with my experience doing that um so why do we want to do quick on IoT devices very briefly right there's there's some um, um you know we want to reuse what's working for the internet we don't want to like uh, invest in um, having a separate stack if we don't have to have one. Um, and so the question if it's possible to do so, and just leverage all of the engineering that you know, the web people are pouring into quick and, and related protocols. Um, if we can leverage that, that would be great. I mean, Hannes just talked about we you know why we want to use TLS, right? And this is a similar kind of um, effort. And quick obviously uses TLS 1.3, so there's a little link to Hannes's talk too. Um, there's there's two stacks that I that I use that are sort of um, my own research toys. Um, one's called Warp Core, which is basically um, originally was meant to be a um, data center um, kernel by bypass um, UDP and IP stack um, on top of NetMap, which is Luigi Rizzo's DPDK-like kernel bypass framework. So it's pretty small. It's also pretty bare bones. Um, and uh, has support for zero copy. Um, uh, so I'm using that as a as a packet IO backend for Quant, which is a, a sort of toy quick stack that I've been doing as part of the uh, standardization efforts that we're doing in the IETF. Um, Warp Core is is pretty basic, um, and um, the the nice thing is because it's a it's a wrapper, right? I can basically um, put packet IO for various IoT platforms into Warp Core and then whatever application runs on top, my, my quick stack, for example, is agnostic to that. So um, the two boards that I used, one is, was a particle argon um, and one is, it was an ESP32. Um, the particle argon runs device OS, which is a free RTOS sort of fork, as far as I can tell. Um, that has LWIP and so basically the, the socket um, back end that uh, warp core has just runs fine uh riot has gnrc which is somewhat different as as you guys know uh so i, I hacked together a very simple uh back end uh to support that at the time when i did this there wasn't any um support for select or poll in gnrc that's recently been fixed and i've sort of used i'm using that now but at the, at the time i did these measurements that wasn't there yet so, so that was that, that was very inconvenient in some sense if you can't even select or poll on something. Um, Quant is a is a transport stack, so I'm not doing HTTP three here. I'm just basically doing the TCP equivalent of of uh, um, the transport protocol. Uh, the focus on was originally again high performance data center networking, uh, that, hence using Warp Core and NetMap. 
but uh, because it's um, supposed to be fast, it's supposed to basically run in the instruction cache in Xeon, so it's also pretty small, which is nice. And it uses a bunch of sort of components other than warp core. So it uses khash, uh, which uh, as a hash table, I've modified that a bit to make it work better for IoT devices by removing some floating point stuff that, that you know, has no purpose being there. Uh, timing wheels, um, because libpv and friends are a little bit too big. Um, 3.h from FreeBSD, it's very simple. It's it's well tested. Bit set from FreeBSD. I use Pico TLS, which is Kazuo Oku's uh, TLS 1.3 stack, um, which has an open SSL backend, but it also has what he calls mini crypto, which is basically Cifra and micro ECC for the required uh, crypto algorithms. Um, so it's reasonably small. All of this is like, um, you know, WorpCore has 3,000 lines of code, most of which aren't used here. Um, because we're, we're actually not using NetMap as a uh, packet IO. And, and the quick stack is like around 10,000 lines of code, excluding uh, Pico TLS, but including all the other dependencies. So I, I said I, I used the particle argon basically because it, it looked nice and had Wi Fi. Uh, I didn't really want to deal with you know link layers that, that were foreign to me at this point. Uh, similar for the ESP32, it's, it's a sort of friendly and, and pretty well supported board. Um, and it's also pretty powerful. So, so you guys probably know the the specs of these, but they're pretty beefy, right? They're 32-bit chips. They're they're pretty fast. They have floating point uh, uh, hardware support, which is nice. Both of them actually have also hardware crypto support, which I was excited about. And then I found out that none of this is actually usable. I'll get to that. Um, they have a lot of RAM. Uh, as I said, I didn't want to run out of resources. They have a lot of flash. Same reason. Um, they have wireless LAN and they have like a tool chain, which is not sort of super new anymore, but uh, works well enough. Um, the Riot OS data that I'm showing you is, is from October, last October's release. I just verified today that I'm still compiling on the, the most recent version that came out, which is I think 2000, 2020, October or July.1 or something like that. Um, but the numbers are from, from back then. Right. Um, so I'm going to show you some measurements about, you know, the footprint of uh, Quick on on these two boards. Uh, I'm going to talk about code size and static data size first. Um, and there's various options. So I'm going to show you a bunch of di diagrams, right? So the Argon, there's there's two bar diagrams. I'm going to show you the Argon is always on top, and the ESP32 is on the bottom. I should say that the ESP32 uh, by by default doesn't run Riot, but I, I wanted to sort of compare. It, it also runs its own Free Artos clone. I wanted to run a different operating system, which is why I'm running Riot for the ESP32, but I use the device OS for the Argon because yeah, that, that was easier to do. Um, so the, there's three colors in these bar diagrams. Um, the, the, the purple sliver on top of the bar is the application, which is very simple. Um, basically just does a get for an object that is 5,000 bytes long from uh, my local web server over Wi-Fi. Um, you can see that the Argon purple bar is slightly bigger. That's because I have some other stuff in there. Like if you press a button, it does some other things, but uh, it's pretty minimal. So it's it's, a, it's 1 to 2K in both cases. Um, the red part is the quick stack. Um, there's two shades of red. The, the dark red is actually the quick functionality, and the light red is the, the packet IO warp core. And you can see that that's a very, very small fraction of the overall um, sort of quick part of the of the graph. The green stuff is TLS 1.3. Um, and again, there's there's three sort of shades of green. There's dark green, which is the actual Pico TLS TLS protocol. And then there's the Cifra uh, crypto uh, functionality and the micro ECC crypto functionality. Um, so this is basically where we are, right? So so roughly 100K for, for both of those platforms and you get a uh, quick and TLS 1.3 with a very simple client, which is not terrible, right? I was very surprised. And I should say there's already some um, optimizations in there. So I got rid of most of 64-bit stuff. Um, I try to avoid um, code that compiles into, you know, complicated, uh, like like uh, modulo and division by 64-bit types and so on. So I, I removed some of that stuff uh, and, and went to single position floating point and so on. But but basically this is not like rocket science, right? So so even just compiling something down and, and paying a little bit of attention, you can you can run it on these boards, which arguably are you know pretty featureful, but um, you know it's it's not terrible. 
Um, and then I try to sort of see if I can make it smaller, right? So the next thing I did is I did um, some more 32-bit optimizations. Actually, sorry, um, the baseline was just compiling it. This is now, you know, eliminate the, the costly part of 64-bit math that isn't supported on, on the CPUs um, with some bit flipping tricks. I use 32-bit with types for a bunch of internal variables like packet numbers, which, you know, Quick has 64 bit packet numbers, it's unlikely that an IoT device would send that many packets. Even 32-bit is probably pushing it. Um, and um, it's not fully spec conformant, therefore, right? Because, you know, what if you want to have a connection that lasts for, like, you know, a really long time? But I think for all intents and purposes, this is fine. And you can see it already saves a couple of kilobytes. We were we're going down to 3 to 4K just by doing that. Um, next, you know, Quant by default is a client and a server library. So both functionality for client mode and server mode are included. You, it's probably unlikely that you're going to run a server on an IoT board that runs on a battery. So if you got rid of the server part of uh, of Quick and TLS, we, we get some big savings, right? Um, we are uh, shedding almost 20K at that point already. A lot of it is in the in the Pico TLS protocol part because we can basically get rid of all of the server part of the TLS protocol. Um, one thing we're also doing here, uh, client mode lets us basically say we're going to use zero length connection identifiers, which is a quick thing. Um, that means you're identifying a connection by IP address and port, which is fine for IoT boards. Um, and that gets us some, some other savings as well at the quick layer. Then. That's why it's going down a little bit. Um, what if we only included the absolutely the crypto that we absolutely need to require to be TLS 1.3 conformant, right? So we're basically using uh, you know just one cipher suite and one key exchange, and that's it. Um, you know we are still gaining a lot there, specifically where we're the the Cifra and micro ECC light green uh, bars shrink down quite a bit. Um, so so some more gains here, and also um, PL. Pico TLS gets a little bit smaller. Um, so I would love to be able to use the hardware crypto uh, on these boards, but but it's not really accessible. On the Argon with Particle Device OS, basically Particle has a, a sort of middleware that's running and connects these devices to the cloud and makes them manageable, and that uses the, that those hardware functions. But uh, it's unclear whether an application written on top of their platform can use them. Uh, it, it's It's definitely unsupported and it's not even clear whether it'll work or not um and i wasn't able to figure out easily on the esp32 how to actually do it um but if if that was available it would lead to performance benefits and we could cut a whole bunch of you know code size out um but by now we've like already we're down like 25 to 30 percent from where we started which is is quite good um the next few slides i'm actually going to turn off some optional quick functionality um, so getting rid of some stuff that's sort of optional and quick to further reduce the footprint. So if we don't support connection migration, so Quick has this notion that if your if your NAT rebinds, the connection stays alive because you can you know migrate to a different path, and there's a lot of logic around that. It's probably unnecessary for IoT. Uh, if we get rid of that, there's some some you know 4K savings at the Quick layer that we get immediately by doing so. Um, Quant is pretty uh, uh, verbose. So, so quick uh, connection close frames include an error phrase that is basically a human readable string. And, and I make use of that quite liberally. Um, if I didn't do that, right, I don't have to keep the, the static strings around in the image. That's actually a surprisingly big chunk. It's already like 3, 4K. So um, we're going to cut those out. Um, Quick has a thing called a stateless reset, which is basically a way for a server to tell a client that I don't know who you are, or an endpoint to tell the other endpoint, I don't know who you are, uh, based on uh, hashing some part of the quick packet that comes in. Um, if we get rid of that, right, that the we, we can't do that anymore, which means the other guy needs to time out, but do we really care as an IoT device? Probably not. So we can get rid of some more, you know, supporting uh, logic in the protocol. Um, there is a uh, zero RTT handshake. Hannes talked a little bit about this in terms of TLS. Quick uses that. Um, there's some logic that's needed to do that. Um, what if we you know, um, 
and, and, and zero RTT packets specifically are pretty costly when they get reordered. And so the um, suggestion is that you try and cache those as an implementation. If we didn't do that, um, we again get some savings. If we drop all reordered data, we don't need to, you know, uh, cache those. And, and again, there's some some benefits in terms of uh, footprint, probably a little bit loss of performance, but reordering might be rare enough that it's okay to do so. And then there's some further, you know, connection level tracking that that Quant implements. Um, but basically, sort of, we're going, you know, down to like under 70 k uh under 60k for for riot on the bottom so that's actually pretty good that's much better than i thought when i started um some other measurements sort of stack and heap usage so so when you run this thing uh specifically the client does a get for an object that's 5k downloads it and that's it what what happens um same two uh Stacks argon on the top, ESP32 on the bottom. There's some phases there highlighted in red and orange and green and blue. Uh, one is the initialization phase during which like the application or the board starts uh, and some stuff happens. Uh, open is when we're open the quick connection uh, doing the TLS handshake. The green transfer is when we're actually exchanging data, like the get and then the, the uh, object arrives and closes when we're tearing down the connection and, and shutting the board off. So we I instrumented the binaries to lock uh, stack and heap uh, on enter exit and exported this over serial, which is you know not something you want to do uh, very often. Uh, therefore, I did not instrument Cifra and micro ECC. So the, the the plots here that show you the stack size and later on also the heap size um, do not include the actual crypto. So so they basically show you what you would kind of have um, if you could use hardware offload. Actual uh, stack usage is actually quite a bit higher. Cifra and micro ECC have uh, some non-negligible uh, stack usage. I'm not showing time units because since I uh, export over serial, it's basically meaningless. And I'm only plotting a random 20% sample uh, to not overplot so much. So you can see some stuff. Basically, um, you know, you can, starting out, right, um, doing initialization, we're basically, uh, you know, Initialization on on Argon is really fast. On the on Riot, basically, it, it includes acquiring the the Wi-Fi, uh, joining the Wi-Fi network, and that takes quite some time. But you know, basically, there's almost no stack usage during that time um, on both platforms. Um, during connection open, you can kind of see the public key crypto uh, building up the stack. Um, which is not great. There's a lot of uh, that is in, actually in Pico TLS, which Kazuo has since cut out. Uh, I haven't had a chance to rerun the measurements, so I guess he he saved probably 500k, if not if not more, uh, 500 bytes, if not more. But it's still not great. So so the, the stack usage is actually it's it's larger than the default Riot stack, which is I think 1k, um, and the the uh, particle stack is only 6k. So we're we're you know not not great here. Um, so there's some optimizations that could be done uh, to make Pico TLS specifically better. Um, the good thing is during transfer phase, you know, with symmetric crypto is, is actually quite a bit better. We're using about around a K of stack without the crypto functions. So actually we're, we're still higher than that. Um, but some, some, you know, better uh, performance here would, would be helpful. And then you, nothing really happens during, during uh, connection close. Uh, now we're looking at the heap. Um, so that's the nice thing that you immediately see. It's, it's pretty flat, which is nice. Um, so basically, uh, WebCore uses pre-allocated packet buffers, so I allocate 15 of those just because um, you can see the little blue arrows is where you stack usage jumps by that much and, and drops down at the end in the blue part. Um, the argon heap size is much larger than the riot heap size, and that's because, as I mentioned, the particle has this whole thing running in parallel that keeps your device connected to the cloud. And that has a pretty hefty uh, cost in terms of RAM. Um, so, so therefore, there's a lot, a lot more RAM used um, on uh, the Argon. And the way in which I report the RAM includes, unfortunately, that, that firmware part. I haven't found out an easy way to subtract that out. But basically, it's, it's pretty flat through, during connection open and during transfer, which is kind of what you want to have. Um, there's a little bit of an increase here doing open when as stuff gets allocated, but then it's pretty flat. Um, right, final part of the measurements, energy and performance. And those are like, you know, very, very, very drafty uh, because it couldn't do very many runs. Um, 
So I did one run exactly uh, with an argon only because I didn't have a battery for the ESP32. So I have a 2000 milliamp battery um, that I'm fu I fully charged and I'm basically powering the argon and it all it does is it does get 5000, retrieves the object and does it over and over and over and over again um, for about two and a half days until it's run out of battery. And what I'm plotting on the right is basically the voltage of the battery. I do two runs, the red run, uh, the, the blue run is the, where every handshake is a one RTT handshake, so I'm not caching TLS tickets. The red line is uh, if I do uh, zero RTT handshakes for all connections except for the very, very first one. And you can basically see that you know there's a lot of hand waving in the in, in these slides because the, the voltage is is pretty rough, but um, we, we can do you know quite a few more runs with zero RTT, which is nice. So, so zero RTT has some battery performances and has also some performance uh, benefits, as you can see here. So the, the same colors, uh, one RTT uh, versus zero RTT, and you can see that it takes around 5.1 seconds maybe um, to to uh, start or to retrieve a 5K object over quick on the argon and with ZRTT it takes around you know 4.6 or so seven um there's some questions here you know why is the slope slightly different um why uh, you know do the lines cross there i haven't had time to look into that i need to rerun that but the problem is since every run takes like days it's really kind of not so great to um, repeat something and i don't have very many of these boards so I can't parallelize. But basically, it seems like, you know, in summary, that that Quick actually works pretty well on these devices already, and the footprint is smaller than I thought, and, you know, people should start playing with it. There's lots of stuff that needs to be done, you know, data upload, it hasn't been done. There's I've varied no parameters of any measurement here. That's why, you know, it's not really an academic paper. There's no comparison against other protocols. Uh, there's no comparison against different IoT boards. The energy measurements are really simplistic. On the implementation side, you know, there's no HTTP3. Um, there's stuff that can be done to PQTLS to make it better. Um, there's better data structures, right? These are data structures that are meant to be fast in data centers. They're not meant to be small on IoT devices. Uh, no use of hardware crypto. Um, there's some other optimizations for zero RTT that could be done. I would like to look at, you know, running on something other than Wi-Fi because on, on Riot OS, right, uh, the ESP32 driver is already 115 kilobytes. So that's 45% of my build size is just to, so that I can speak Wi-Fi, which seems pretty ridiculous. Um, and the question is sort of if, if somebody did this properly uh, and, and try to get quick uh, and TLS 1.3 running on these boards, how small could it be? Could you actually go down to 16-bit controllers or something much smaller than, than the class that I've looked at? I think it would be an interesting challenge to try. And that's my talk. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lars, for this cool presentation. Um, it's cool stuff. I mean, um, I remember that this part of this kicked off uh, during the last summit. So um, it worked quite well. So questions, please, in the chat. Um, Maybe I can start again. Um, I mean, do you have any specific application scenarios in mind where Quick could quite be beneficial for the IoT? Um, not not to... really. So I mean, basically, I am I'm sort of this, at the political level, right? I sort of um, would like the IoT space to be able to use the protocols that the rest of the internet is using as much as possible because I, I really think the sort of completely parallel protocol stack is just not a great future, right? And um, sort of that, that was sort of my, my motivating factor for this. I wanted to see if it's actually doable. And, and yeah, you can make the argument that there will always be like the very, very low end of IoT where you will need special stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for, for most of it, right, if, if you, I mean, these devices are not exactly expensive anymore. Uh, I think for most of it, you could probably just use the web protocols in some form. And, and that was my motivation, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a valid point. Um, other questions? Um, I mean, did, do, you already talked a little bit about, um, let's say, challenges in uh, Riot um, to actually port quick uh, to Riot. I mean, you also talked about that some stuff uh, about soft. Um, 
Is there anything on your wish list that we should do better to make um, protocols such as Quick easier to implement on Riot? So at first I tried to use LWIP for Riot and that sort of failed and I didn't quite understand why. And I was basically told, you know, use GNRC and I, I did and that worked okay. And, and now that there is some, some more high level support like select and poll, equivalence uh, that is that is nice the one the one thing that i've sort of and, and i have really i'm a very you know early stage user of riot one thing that i struggled with i thought i would be using riot and then it would be easy to also run on a different board so i actually got another one uh hmm. that had a wi-fi uh, and, and i couldn't even compile right because hmm. obviously the tool chain is different and then all of us you, you already have quite a few if defs in there because the ESP32 toolchain has certain things that it doesn't define or defines weirdly. And it seems like if you want to run on another board, you're adding a whole nother if def thing to your um, to your code. So, so some better hardware abstraction, I think, would be helpful. Um, yeah. oh, and, and also some like way it. to use some, you know, some hardware abstraction that would, would let you use like crypto offload or something like that. I think that would be quite nice. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's something that we are working on. Um, so that's a question by Hannes. Please go ahead. Hi, Hannes. Hi, Lars. Uh, hey, thanks, Lars. thanks for. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Lars, I was uh, surprised about the huge heap usage, and I wasn't quite sure what you meant by these fifteen uh, buffers. Right. So what, what was that? So, so when warp core, the my my packet IO framework is is written for kernel bypass, right? And so basically. You, you you statically allocate your packet buffers and that's where your application data lives and so um on on if i run on linux right i i basically have like 10 million packet buffers uh so all my ram and and that that's sort of it's not quite the right model for iot but basically so 15 packet buffers is enough with some headroom to transfer 5k um and and so basically that's that's what i allocated and at first i thought that you know this this would actually that this idea of pre-allocated packet buffers would work well with IoT operating systems, except it doesn't, neither for Argon nor for Riot, because so there's there's actually no way to operate on the packet buffers directly that, that is used down there in the in the hardware. Mm -hmm. But that's that's why the, the heap uses it's so big. It's basically those those 15 buffers. And you could probably go down to to fewer, um, but you do need some because um when quick generates the tls handshake data right you basically need to packetize them and before you send them and so you need to keep them around but it seems like an area of uh, a lot of potential for optimization yeah so so i mean one downside of of quant comes from it's so it wants to be fast for data centers and so it's zero copy which also mm -hmm. means that all the packet buffers are like full frame mtu size things uh, on an IoT device, you probably would rather deal with the memory copy and and have a smaller footprint. So there's, if if somebody actually wanted to run quick on IoT devices, they should definitely start over, uh, and and do it properly. This is sort of more a hey, you know, even with a stack that's not really optimized for IoT, it it kind of runs, and and the footprint isn't very large. And and the the crypto your crypto experience, I think other people have noticed that too. Um, and uh, we've actually worked on an API that uh, hopefully at some point in time will allow you to uh, swap out crypto and dump in hardware crypto, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it's called the BSA, the Platform Security Architecture Crypto API. Okay, that's cool. You want to... Thanks a lot.